Philosophers and academics have been trying to explain light from the beginning of time. Simply said, the fastest moving object in the universe is light, which travels at incredible speeds. It measures distance because its speed is a constant and insurmountable barrier. Stick around as we explore the wonders of light. Have you ever thought of how quickly light moves? The speed of light, which is unchanging, is 1,079,252,848.8 km per second, 1.07 billion km per hour. This equates to a rate of 299,792,458 meters per second. To put this into perspective, if you could travel at the speed of light, you could go around the world almost seven and a half times in one second. If someone traveled 500 miles per hour, it would take more than 50 hours to complete one full rotation worldwide. According to astronomical calculations, the distance from the Earth to the Moon is approximately 384,398.25 kilometers. Because of this, light may travel that distance slightly more than a second. Because the distance between the Sun and the Earth is about 149,597,886 kilometers, it takes light barely under 8 minutes to make the journey. It should therefore not come as a surprise that the speed of light is the unit of measurement utilized for calculating the distances involved in astronomy. When we say that a star such as Proxima Centauri is 4.25 light years away, we mean that it would take approximately 4 years and 3 months to get there if you traveled there at a constant speed of 1.07 billion kilometers per hour. Light years are a unit of distance used in astronomy. But how precisely do we arrive at this astonishingly accurate notion of light speed? But what are the views on light travel? According to the theory of special relativity developed by physicist Albert Einstein, which is a basis for the majority of contemporary physical theory, there's nothing in the universe that can move faster than light. As the speed of an object approaches that of light, the hypothesis states that the object's mass can no longer be measured. As a consequence, the overall speed of the universe is constrained by the rate at which light travels. The National Institute of Standards and Technology in the United States states that because the speed of light is so constant, it is used to determine worldwide standard measurements such as the meter and by extension the mile, the foot and the inch. Utilizing certain ingenious formulae contributes to the defining of the kilogram as well as the Kelvin unit of temperature. Although the speed of light is considered a universal constant, it is not uncommon for science fiction scientists and authors to entertain the idea of traveling at a rate greater than that of light. Even though no one has yet successfully demonstrated valid warp drive, we are all moving towards new stories, new technologies and new physics. This is the case even though no one has yet successfully demonstrated an actual warp drive. Is the warp drive fiction or soon to be a reality? Mexican theoretical physicist Miguel Alcubierre demonstrated in 1994 that it was mathematically conceivable to compress space-time in front of the spacecraft while expanding it back within the confines of general relativity. What does that imply then? Consider that two points are 10 meters apart. It would take 10 seconds to get from point A to point B if you could move at 1 meter per second while standing still at point A. Let's assume, however, that you could somehow reduce the distance between point A and point B so that now it's only 1 meter. You could then travel through space-time at your top speed of 1 meter per second and arrive at point B in a little under a second. Since you're not moving faster than the speed of light in the space around you, this strategy theoretically does not violate the rules of relativity. The warp drive from Star Trek was theoretically feasible as demonstrated by Alcubierre. Recent works by Alexei Bobrik and Gianni Martyr, as well as Eric Lenz, offer potential solutions that might make practical use of warp drives in reality. Bobrik and Martyr reasoned that they might avoid employing negative energy if they altered space-time within the bubble in a specific manner. However, a faster-than-light warp drive cannot be created using this approach. Lenz, on his own, independently came up with a solution that doesn't entail using negative energy. He solved the general relativity equations using a geometric method and discovered that negative energy isn't required for a warp drive. If Lenz's plan is implemented, the bubble could exceed the speed of light. It's important to emphasize that the fascinating advancements discussed here are merely mathematical models. As a physicist, I can't put too much stock in models before we have experimental confirmation. Warp drive technology is still in the future, but scientists are getting closer. As someone who enjoys science fiction, I applaud using fresh ideas. As Captain Picard once said, that which seems impossible now may turn out to be possible in the future. 
various scientists have shown the different methods of increasing the acceleration to near light speed as being number one electromagnetic fields almost all methods used to accelerate particles to relativistic speeds including using electromagnetic fields the same force that holds refrigerator magnets in place Particles traveling across the cosmos are accelerated to relativistic speeds by electric and magnetic forces working together as one. In their most basic form, electromagnetic fields propel charged particles in a manner akin to how gravity pulls on objects with mass. This is the method by which electromagnetic fields accelerate charged particles. Particles can be accelerated to nearly the speed of light by being subjected to electromagnetic fields. Accelerating particles to smaller sizes using electric fields is a common laboratory technique on Earth. By using pulsed electromagnetic fields, particle accelerators like the Large Hadron Collider and Fermilab can speed up charged particles to nearly the speed of light. These velocities allow the particles to collide with one another, producing very energetic impacts. By doing so, scientists can probe for fundamental particles to learn more about the universe immediately following the Big Bang. Number 2. Magnetic Explosion Space is filled with magnetic fields that surround Earth and extend throughout the solar system even charged cosmic rays that they guide spiral around the areas. These magnetic fields can entangle when they collide with one another. Magnetic reconnection is when crossed wires that have built up too much tension suddenly snap and realign. The abrupt shift in a region's magnetic field produces electric fields which accelerate all the nearby charged particles. The solar wind and continuous stream of charged particles emanating from the sun is one type of particle that may be accelerated to relativistic speeds according to scientists by magnetic reconnection. Near planets, the swift particles also have several unintended consequences. Near us, magnetic reconnection occurs when the Earth's magnetosphere, or shielding magnetic field, is pushed against the Sun's magnetic field. The particles can be launched into Earth's upper atmosphere and ignite the auroras when magnetic reconnection takes place on the side of the planet facing away from the Sun. Though in slightly different ways, magnetic reconnection is also suspected to be to blame in the vicinity of other planets like Jupiter and Saturn. The magnetospheric multi-scale spacecraft from NASA was created to focus on comprehending every facet of magnetic reconnection. The mission circles the Earth with four identical spacecraft to observe magnetic reconnection in operation. Scientists can learn more about particle acceleration at relativistic speeds both within the universe and around the Earth from the data analysis findings. Number 3. Wave-Particle Interaction The acceleration of particles can occur due to wave-particle interactions, which are the interactions between electromagnetic waves and particles. When electromagnetic waves come into contact with their fields, they can condense. Charged particles that oscillate back and forth between waves have the potential to generate energy. This is analogous to a ball being bounced between two converging walls. As a consequence of these interactions, which occur continuously all across the region close to the Earth, particles are accelerated to rates that have the potential to cause damage to the electronic components of spacecraft and satellites. The study of wave-particle interactions is helped forward by the work of the Van Allen probes and other NASA missions. Wave-particle interactions are thought to be responsible for the acceleration of at least some of the cosmic rays that originate from beyond our solar system. After a supernova has occurred, the star's center will unleash a blast wave, a shell of compressed gas that is both hot and compact. Because these bubbles are loaded with magnetic fields and charged particles, the wave-particle interactions that occur within them can produce high-energy cosmic rays that can travel at a speed of 99.6% that of light. Wave-particle interactions may continue, at least in part, to the acceleration of both solar wind and cosmic rays emanating from the sun. I hope you enjoyed this video. Don't forget to like, subscribe and leave a comment on your way out. Thanks for watching.